flat again. This won't do. We gotta fix this. No more flat tires for me. Let's go. Hey guys, Joshua here from Gander Flight. Today we are going to be making our air filled tire into a solid state tire. So the tires that come on hand carts and garden tractors and wheelbarrows, most of them come as pneumatic tires filled with a gas, usually just uh, atmospheric air. Um, and they do so because it's a great ride. You get the cushion of air and it's, a, it's an easier push over rough terrain. The downfall is if there's no air in the tire, then it's worthless. So it's really good when it's working correctly and it doesn't work at all when it's not. So for things that I use infrequently, such as my wheelbarrow, and I come out to a flat tire more than once, I'm gonna switch this over to a solid state tire. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use expanding foam. Now, I wanna state that as we go through and we do this, this is off label for this stuff. Um, it is not designed to do this, but we're gonna see if it works. So. Let's get going and uh, let's make sure that we don't have to deal with any more flat tires on this wheelbarrow ever again. So make sure you stick around to the end because I ended up testing three different types of foam. One worked, two didn't, and then I put 250 pounds on it at the end as a weight test. And you can see exactly how it worked. Make sure you watch to the end. All right guys, so this should be pretty simple. I ended up getting the big gap filler uh, just because I figured this was a big gap. But again, this is off label. It says not to use enclosed voids or cavities but we're gonna see if it works um, because it's cheaper than getting a brand new tire and messing with more inner tubes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just drill four holes equal distance apart in the tire um, and then go from there. So let's make sure our straw can fit into there. Cool. So, the other thing the instructions say is to shake vigorously for one minute. So we're gonna do that. All right, while I was shaking that, I got to thinking, I wanna make these holes extra big. Not just big enough for the straw, but big enough that when the foam expands, any excess, excess is gonna easily come out of there and not be pushing too much on the tire and pop it off the bead. So I'm gonna make these just a little bit bigger. Now the instructions on this uh, expanding foam says to add water, spritz with water, to speed up drying. So it tells me that it needs some sort of moisture to cure. Well, I doubt there's a whole lot of moisture in this old dried out tire. So I got a little squirt bottle here and I'm just gonna squirt some water in there and just kind of get the inside a little bit moist, give it that moisture it needs to cure. You know, this is all an experiment. It may not work, but we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna see how it goes. If it works for me, I'll let you know, and then you can try it yourself. All right, so let's get this cap on. Screw this on. Fill it up. All right, and now it says that it needs eight hours to cure, so I'm gonna let this sit probably overnight. We'll be back tomorrow to see how it did. Just a quick interruption. I know that since you're watching this video, you're into DIY. Come join us in our DIY group, DIYers, Tinkers, Fixers, and Makers. Check out the link in the description box below. All right, so I let these set overnight, and uh, I think it's gonna work. This is pretty cool. We're gonna trim these up and get the wheel cleaned up and get it put back on. I went ahead and I had another wheel and I tried to do it, um, but as you can see, it didn't quite work on this one. And that is because I only had one can of the spray foam. And so if you're gonna need to do more than two wheels, or more than one wheel, excuse me, you're gonna need a can per wheel. Um, these are eight inch tires. And so take that accordingly and uh, plan accordingly. So I may get another can, put some more holes in there and fill these ones up, we'll see. But let's get this one cleaned up and get it back on and see how it does with a load on it. All right guys, so I was talking with my buddy Patrick from NT Knives. Check out his site if you uh, are interested in getting an awesome neck knife. But he was curious to know, since I used the big gap filler 
if I had used the regular window and door, how it would be different, if it would feel any different. Um, and I didn't know. So I was wondering if I take this one that didn't quite fill and I pop this off, scrape out most of this foam and then get a regular window and door one and then compare them and see if I can tell any difference. So I'm going to try and get the, the big gap out of this one so we can put the normal window and door in. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but let's give it a try. So that's going to be enough to get that out. As you can see, the foam just kind of pops out, scrapes off. So now I've got to reseat this tire, but I've got holes in it. So I'm going to figure out how, how, to, how to get that done, and then we're going to put the window and door stuff in here, let it cure, and then see what the difference is between the two. So let's try and seat this tire. I don't know how I'm going to do that <laughs> without being able to use the air. All right, so we got that tire back on the bead. I thought it was going to be a big problem because of the holes. I couldn't use air to reseat it, um, but I just used a screwdriver, stuck it in those holes, and then pushed it over on the beads, both sides. Uh, it wasn't too difficult. This tire is pretty worn out, pretty stretched. Uh, I imagine you'd have a little more difficulty if it was a brand new tire, but if it's a brand new tire, you could just use air to reseat the bead like normal. Uh, you wouldn't have all these holes in it. So we're going to shake this stuff up for a minute and then spray it in there. Let's give it a go. All right, so as you can see, the window and door foam, insulating foam, kind of uh, overgrew. And what's interesting is although the tire was full when I did it, it's, there's nothing in here. I mean, there's no, no anything. It seems like all of it came back out of the holes. Super interesting, super interesting. Now the only thing I did do on this one that I totally forgot to do then on this one is I didn't spray any little water in there. Um, so that may or may not affect it, but I don't think it would have caused all of it to come out of those holes. So I don't think window and door is the way to go for this application. So we've tried the big gap filler, we tried the window and door, and now we're going to just try the regular. This is just the regular great stuff, fills gap, gaps and cracks up to an inch. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take this tire off, empty all this out, and try just the regular and see between the, the big gap and the regular, if the regular even works, and which is gonna be better for this application. All right, so I got that cleaned up as best as I could. I pulled the tire off the bead scraped out as much as I could. That window and door is definitely a lot more sticky. Um, as you can see, like it just just sticks to the stuff, whereas that big gap, I was able to just pull off and there's, you know, other than the holes, you can't tell if there was anything here. Granted, this did over, did not overflow as much as this one did. But even on the inside, uh, there's this yellow residue along the rim um, that I just couldn't get off and it's not worth the time to try and scrape it off. But I did get it cleaned out. I'm gonna to remember to add some water this time. And maybe that's the key factor is that there was not enough moisture in there. However, just looking at the foam, um, this big gap stuff compared to the window and door is far less squishy. Um, you know, I don't know which would be better, but 
at the moment the big gap is the one that's it's working well for this project. But we're gonna see what the just regular great great stuff foam spray foam does and how that compares to this. Doing all this experimenting so you guys can know which one's the best to do. So we'll get, put a little bit of water in there. Make sure there's some moisture. All right, let's give this regular stuff a try. Now we wait, let it cure. All right, so we let this one sit, the regular gaps and cracks overnight, and it kind of did the same thing as the window and door. Uh, not quite as bad, it didn't overflow as much. Um, but it does have some, some spots that it didn't, it didn't fill. It also has some spots, let's see if I can find one of them, wherever it went to, that it did fill the whole thing. Um, so, you know, did I, did I overfill it and it evacuated? Obviously. Um, if I had filled it less, would it have filled out more? I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that of the three that we used, the big gap, the window and door, the gaps and cracks, the one that was easiest to use was the big gap. It, it worked, you know, I put it in until it started coming out and then I stopped. It just had those little pockets that just popped right off. It was easiest to clean up. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a pain to get this off and cleaned up because these ones are definitely more sticky than the other. Yeah, all that residue is still sticking on there. Um, let's go ahead and take this one, the one that did work, and go put some weight on it. We'll put it back up on the wheelbarrow. We'll fill the wheelbarrow up with some stuff and see how it holds up to some weight. Let's give it a try. Okay, so I've got five buckets of cat litter. They're each 20 pounds, so it's 100 pounds of weight. I weigh 150. I'm gonna jump on the front here. We're gonna see if we can get that foam to compress, to crunch. Um, it's not going to be a long-term test, but it's going to see if it'll hold up initially. You know, I can't tell any difference in the amount of give. They're not rock hard, there is a bit of give to them, but I cannot tell where that spot was. Overall, I think it's fantastic. We'll have to see how it holds up over time, but this is a great, simple, cheap solution. Well, there you go. We put some weight on it, and it works. I think if your tires are to the point of it's either do this or buy new rubber, it's totally worth a try. I think I could definitely get another season, if not two, out of this. And you know what? If after a season there were some flat spots, I might even drill a hole and add some more foam. I don't know. It all depends on how much money you want to spend. You know, if you want to fix it for $5 a tire, um, you can get by with some spray foam. Now there were some differences. I think if I were to do it again, I'd just go straight to the big gap and I wouldn't even mess with the others. Is it possible that you could have gotten it done with the regular if you had been a little more, I don't know, careful about how much you put in there and how much you do it? Probably, maybe, but I just shot that in and it was done. So I would just buy the big gap. Um, it's no more 
expensive, I think maybe 50 cents more expensive than this one was. Um, and you can see the different foam and it handled differently. The door and window stuff, I wouldn't use. It didn't work at all. Um, it totally evacuated that tire and didn't leave any foam in there. So I would, I would totally skip the door and window. But uh, you might be able to do with the gaps and cracks, the regular great stuff. But I would just go for the big, the big gap and get it done with. Um, that's cool. I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not, but that is totally doable and totally, totally usable. Um, man, very cool. If you gained some value from this video, go ahead and click that thumbs up and consider subscribing. We do lots of stuff like this all the time. And it just blows my mind. You and be aware that again, we're using it off label. It says do not use in voids and covered cracks. So, I mean, a sealed tire is definitely a void. So just be aware, you're using it off label, you're using it not as it's advised, but I think for under $5 a can, it's just super cool. I would totally do it again. Let me know in the comments below, are you gonna try it? Have you done it, did it work? If you did it and it did not work, which type of foam did you use? Well, thanks guys for hanging out with me and doing this little experiment with the spray foam in the tire. My name's Joshua and you've been watching Gander Flight. Until next time, take care and pay forward.